let's recall what the intermediate value theorem says. We have a function f continuous on the closed interval a, b. So that means f is defined at the endpoints. f is going to take on positive and negative values on the endpoints. So it doesn't matter which is which, but one is going to have a positive value, one is going to have a negative value. Then there's going to be some x0 in this interval, such that the function evaluated at x0 gives me 0. So the picture for this is, so here a is going to have a negative value, here b is a positive value. Since it's continuous, we have to be able to get from a to b without picking up the pencil. But what's going to have to happen is, to get there, I have to cross the x-axis. Where I cross the x-axis, that's going to be our 0. Now, what's not so great about the intermediate value theorem gives you no idea how to actually go about finding that 0. So what we're going to use here is going to be what's called the bisection method or the bisection algorithm. And if you take introductory computer language courses, you're usually kind of forced to program this guy. So let's see how this is going to work. So I want to find the 0 of the function f of x equal to x squared minus 2 in the interval from 1 to 2. Now, how do we know there's even a 0 in there? If I put 1 into my function, I'm going to get a minus 1. Put a 2 in, I'm going to get a 2. So the intermediate value theorem is telling me there's going to be some point in this region where we cross 0. Now, we also know if you set this equal to 0 and solve it, we're going to get two answers. We're going to get plus and minus square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2 is roughly 1.4, so that's going to land squarely in our region. So we kind of already know the answer, but we just want to see how we could get close to that using some algorithm. So what's our procedure going to be? We're going to have our interval. I'm going to cut it in half. We're going to evaluate the function at the midpoint. The value of that midpoint is either going to be a positive or negative number or 0. If I get 0, I can stop. I've found my 0. If I get a positive, I'm going to take the half that has the negative on the other endpoint. If I get a negative, I take the half that has the positive on the other endpoint. So what we want is to always have an interval where the values are going to be positive on one endpoint, negative on the other. Intermediate value theorem says the 0 has to live in between them. And then we just keep repeating over and over and over again. When do we stop? Well, you stop if you hit your 0. If you never hit your 0, then you're just going to have some predetermined epsilon or some tolerance for where you're close enough. So let's get back to our example. So I'm going to have f of 1 is minus 1, f of 2 is 2. These have opposite signs. So I'm going to take the midpoint, which is 1 and 1 and we're going to apply f to that. When I apply f to 1 and 1 I'm going to get 0.25. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to choose the interval where we have a minus for the value of the other endpoint. So we're going to stick with the interval 1, 1 and 1 Okay, that's stage 1. Stage 2, we're going to take this interval, split it in half, so its midpoint is going to be 1.25. We evaluate that in f, so I'm going to have f of 1.25 gives me minus 0.4375. So the next interval that I choose is going to be the one with the positive endpoint. So we're going to use 1 and 1 half since that gives me 0.25. So we go over to here. I go to stage 3. For this interval, the midpoint is going to be 1.375. All right, let's take a look. If I was going to go even further, I would take the interval. So this is giving me a negative number. So we would pick the positive again. So I would go with the interval 1375 to 1 and 1 half and keep going on and on and on. But for now, let's stop at stage 3. So my estimate for the 0 is going to be where I stop. It's going to be the last midpoint I choose. So my estimate is going to be 1.375. The actual here is going to be 1.414. Now, what's great about the bisection method, it also tells you how big your error can be. The biggest that my error can be, we know that our point's going to live somewhere in this interval. So the biggest error I can have from 1.375 would be if it was all the way over to 1.5. So we have a bound on the error, which is the length of the interval. Okay, so the bound on our error is going to be 1.5 minus 1.375, which is 0.125. So 
If your tolerance was much smaller than that, then you gotta keep bisecting until you get your interval less than your tolerance. What's our actual error? Our actual error is gonna be, take my 1.414, which is the actual, we subtract off our guess, which is 1.375. That gives me 0.039, and we notice that's gonna be less than what we're getting for our bound on the error. So that's how the bisection method works.